So here is a, uh, this is sort of like a calculus question, I would say. So here we have a cubic equation and it says write down the coordinates of the y intercept. Now guys, that is easy marks, one mark. I mean, all right, so, so um, write down the coordinates of the y intercept. So the y intercept would just be, um, you make x equal to zero. So you'd go plug in zero and zero and zero and you would end up with a y value of one. So I'm not gonna waste any of our time there. The answer is zero and one. Ah, calculate the coordinates of the x intercepts. Now, I am aware that there are many different ways that you can do this. A lot of you guys told me about something called a block method, which I still never found on the internet. But if you, this would be the time where you would want to use your block method, okay? It's when you're trying to find the x-intercepts of a, quad, uh, a cubic equation, okay? So we to, to find x, you make y equal to zero. Now, your teacher would have gone through this with you. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this. We have covered this already. I'm just going to do the basics with you. So um, step one, find an x value. Why am I saying find a x value which works? So what I mean by that is I want you to go plug in some, um, or what you do is you, you look at this number over here. And what are all the different numbers that can fit inside that number? Well, the different numbers that can fit inside that, we find out all the numbers that can go into positive one. So guys, some of you use synthetic division. So you can go ahead and use synthetic division for this as well. I know that's the one that does something like, um, one minus one minus one one and then you bring down the numbers yeah it's quite a cool method I remember that a lot of the students in America do that actually um, in algebra two and algebra one so what we're going to do now is we're going to find an x value which works so you, you look at this number here and you use all the factors of that number so the factors of that number will be one or minus one so then what you do is you plug you plug those numbers into this um equation. I'm going to start off with one and I'm going to keep going until I get an answer of zero. So if I had to do this one, what would that give me? One minus one minus one plus one. Okay, that doesn't work. That gives me minus two. So then I try the other one. And I think Marushi, you did say that it is minus one. And if we go type this on the calculator, it gives us a zero. Okay, so we end up with a zero. So we can say, therefore, um, x equals to one is a, sorry, x equals to minus one works. Smiley face. Okay, let's see. All right, so now our first answer is x equals to minus one. So what you now need to do is you need to put that into a, um, a bracket form. And guys, as I said, if you find yourself feeling a bit lost as we go through this question right here, um, do a little bit of going over this again tomorrow. Uh, go into your textbook and go look for how to factorize a cubic equation. My online course has it as well. You'll be able to find it there. So don't feel a bit, don't feel like overwhelmed or anything if you can't remember how to do this. It's how to find the x intercepts of a cubic equation. So the first bracket is going to be x plus one. Then what we're going to be left with is ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. Oh, synthetic division would actually work really quickly. I think I might show you guys that in one of our future lessons. Because synthetic division works very fast. Okay. Um, right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say um, zero equals to, yeah, x plus one. Now you need to try to figure out what is the value of a, b, and c by looking at by looking at this over here. So A will have a value of one. And then C would also have a value of one. How did I do that? Well, the reason is, is that if you had to multiply these two brackets together, this part here would give you x to the power of three. And the x to the power of three has a coefficient of one. 
And then if you had to multiply these two together, one times one, it well, we know that we know that the answer should be a one. And so that is how I got a one over here. And the, now the last piece. Now to find B, this is the more difficult type. What you do now is you either look at the X squares or you look at the X's. Okay, so what we do for to find B is we either choose, we either choose the X squares or we choose the X's. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to choose the X squares. So what is the number in front of the X squares? It's a minus one. Okay, so what you do now is you say minus one equals. Now, where would you get X squared if you had to multiply these two brackets together? Where would you get X squares? It would be when you multiply this one and this one. So that would be a B. And it would also be when you multiply um, this one and this one. So that would be plus one. That is the coefficient there. And if you had to go calculate B, you should find out that B is equal to negative two. And so therefore we can say that zero is equal to X plus one. And now A is one, B is negative two and C is positive one. Now, can you see that this is a trinomial? And that is a trinomial that can actually factorize very nicely as x minus 1 and another x minus 1. And so there we have done it, guys. We have found our three brackets. And so that is our three x intercepts. We can say, therefore, the x intercepts will be x equals to minus 1 or x equals to 1. So can you see that these two are repeating? That is very important. Here's a, no a note for you guys that you can take down quickly. When x intercepts repeat, it means that it will also, well, it will be a turning point. That's very important. When X intercepts repeat, it means that it will also be a turning point at that place. So we should expect to find a turning point over there later on. So our answer for the X intercepts are gonna be X equals to one and zero and minus one and zero. Okay, so there's our X intercepts. Let's erase all of this. Okay. Calculate the coordinates of the turning point of F. Okay, well, that's easy because we can just use minus B over 2A. Ha, I'm joking. You can't use minus B over 2A. Minus B over 2A only works for parabolas or quadratic equations. So that was just a, a nerdy joke. Um, to find the turning point on a cubic equation, we know that a turning point is uh, where your first derivative, or it's where the gradient, let's first say it's where the gradient, let me find a different color here. Your turning points are over here. And they are the places where the gradient is equal to zero. That is how you find a turning point. Yeah, but Kevin, I don't know how to find the gradient. Some of you might be saying, guys, the gradient is the first derivative. The first derivative means gradient. So you take the first derivative of this equation over here, and that's gonna be three X squared minus two X minus one. And the first derivative, which is the gradient should be equal to zero. So you make it equal to zero like that. And now you can solve for X. I'm going to use the quadratic formula now to solve for x. I'm just going to quickly do it on my calculator. You guys know how to do that. Oh, it actually solves quite nicely. x is equal to 1 or x equals to negative a third. For those of you that still love factorizing from like grade 9, um, then what the way you would have factorized that would have been um, 3x plus 1 and x minus one. If you wanted to factorize, that's how you would have done it over there. Okay, so we found the x values of the turning point. Now, how do we find the y value of the turning point? Well done if you know that you should plug it into 
the original equation. That is how you find the y value for any x value. So when x is equal to one, let's go find the y value. So um, the y value there would be zero, okay? So the y value is zero. And then when x is negative a third, then the y value is, okay, you guys can just double check with me if I'm getting the numbers incorrectly, it can happen. So just let me know, but I'm getting one comma one nine as my other y value. So now, okay, so we found the coordinates of the turning point. So we know that when X is one, Y is zero. And when X is negative a third, Y is one comma one nine. Then it says, sketch the graph of F in your answer book. Clearly indicate all intercepts with the axes as well as the turning points. Okay, so that's pretty easy because we've done it all now. So we've got our... Um, our y-intercept, we got a zero and one earlier. So that's over here. X-intercepts are at one and zero. So that's probably somewhere there. And at minus one and zero, minus one and zero would be there. And always remember to give the coordinates. Okay. And then the turning point is at one and zero. So remember that this is also a turning point. Like we said, when it's a, when it's a repeating X intercept, it's also a turning point. And then negative a third and one comma one nine. So that's probably over here. Okay. So the graph is going to have to do something like this. It's going to go um, through this point, turns there, turns there and up. Okay, so there's our, oh, and we should label this coordinates over here as negative a third. And one comma one nine. Perfect. <clears throat> now, write down the values of x, x, <laughs> x, for which f of x first derivative is smaller than zero. So there are two ways that you can do this one. Either you can do it mathematically or you can solve it using the graph, okay? So let me show you both techniques as I think both of them are very important. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the graph method and then I'm gonna show you the mathematical method. So let's go graph. Okay, so what they're saying is where the first derivative is smaller than zero. So we must understand that this is the gradient. We know that, right? That's the gradient. So they want to know where is the gradient negative. Now, where is a graph's gradient negative? It's where the graph is decreasing. So if I had a graph like this, where would it be decreasing? It would be decreasing over, um, it would be decreasing over here. Okay. So that is how you find out where where graphs are decreasing. So where is this graph decreasing? It is decreasing over here. So you would say that X must be bigger than negative a third, but smaller than one. If you prefer interval notation, you could say up from negative a third up to one. Okay, now for those of you that aren't very comfortable with that type of approach, then you can use more of a mathematical type of approach where you would rather do something like this. You would say, uh, let's say mathematical over here, mathematical. You would take the first derivative. So the first derivative we looked at this earlier was equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And you would say 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 smaller than 0. And then you would solve this like a inequality. Let me just switch my video off. You would solve this like an inequality. OK? And I'm not going to go through that, but that's the other way that you could have approached that type of question. You will get the exact same answer.